What is your full name, Shannon? Shannon Plate. Shannon Plate. And you've got an account for us of something that happened to you while you were uh, doing your typical job, which is a security guard, right? Right. Uh, could you go into more detail? And when, when did this happen? This was approximately the second or third week of January 2012. And I was doing uh, security work out in Santa Clarita, California, out in the canyon. And so what, what time of day did uh, something <laughs> happen? I mean, what, what started all of this off? You were talking about uh, locking the gate? Yeah, the first night I was there, uh, probably about 7 p.m., I received the combination to the gate and locked the gate with the combo lock. And I looked up, because I was texting in my car, and I looked up, and the gate was standing wide open with a chain undone. So I thought maybe I didn't unlock it, or that I didn't lock it. And I went out to lock it again. Tugged on it this time. Found it open again a second time after I had looked down for only a minute to text. And then, this is just, <laughs> it's weird. This happened how many times? Three times. What, what happened the third time? The third time I just gave up on it. I actually had sat there for 45 to 50 minutes watching. Uh, and nothing happened? And nothing happened during that time. So and then I looked down one more time, and then the gate was standing open again. And each time you looked down, how, how long did you look down? Only for a minute, just to send out a text. Okay, typical it. text, yeah, about a minute or so. Right. But... For that gate to get open, what would have to happen? Somebody would have to know the combination, first of all. Yeah. Unlock it, unchain it, and push it open. Right, and I didn't hear a thing, nothing. Huh. And then to the left side of where I was parked in my car, there was trees and they were hanging down, t so you could only see about two and a half, three feet uh, from the bottom of the tree to the ground and I saw two huge hairy legs go running behind one of the trees and I never saw anything come out again and I and that was it for that night that was at about 12 30. What, what would you guess those legs what size I mean what would they look like you said they were hairy they, you... they, they were about this big around uh-huh and it was just if you could guesstimate how tall that that two-legged thing was at that point I couldn't I, I really couldn't because I like I said I only could see about two and a half three feet and it was definitely above that so right I didn't even see knees no so. knees oh okay <clears throat> and it only two feet four feet two feet that's all you saw Two and a half to three feet. No, I mean run by. It was there was no four legs. There was just oh yeah, two feet. Yeah. Just two. Two legs. Two legs ran by. Yeah. How how far of a distance was it that you saw it run? Uh, probably a good like seven eight feet when I had first spotted it out of the corner of my eye and I. How many how many steps do you guess it would have take it took in that distance? That was the thing. It was it was kind of weird because uh, the. The footsteps were kind of close together. Uh, in that in that distance, maybe like ten or eleven times. What? It was just a real quick. It was strange, like when something gets startled, you know, and you just all of a sudden, woo, and uh -huh. you just kind of run off. Uh huh. And so I thought maybe it was a bear. And so there's a possibility it was standing there, and you kind of noticed it, and it took off is what you're saying it's kind of like a starting right when you start off you take smaller steps right hmm. interesting and uh now the the same night you, you you saw that this is right after the gate incident yeah that was the gate incident happened from about 7 p.m until about 8 and then I saw this happen uh, with the running legs. I saw that at about 12.30 uh, a.m. Anything else happen? Not that night. I just had this feeling that 
from over at that on that side that something big was watching me and I had that feeling that whatever was coming uh, and opening the gate was coming from that side also I just I knew something was to my left side okay and that feeling didn't go away the whole night it was it was on the left side of me huh. but that other than that that was it for the first night the following night I went out there again uh, about 7 p.m. again and there was still a couple of uh, people out there at that point there was a howling sound and I was talking on the phone to my friend and there was a howling sound about 10 miles out in the distance is what I would guesstimate and it didn't sound like anything I've ever heard I've always gone hiking camping stayed at my uh, family's cabin all the time it didn't sound like a wolf it didn't sound like a coyote but I figured maybe at that point that possibly uh, it could have been just echoing odd through the canyon but it was just a really strange loud howl and then again around midnight um, about 20 feet in back of the passenger side of my car I heard a growling sound like a really loud growl and then it would it would growl like Rrr. And it kept doing it over and over and over again. And so I was, again, still on the phone. And I told my friend, hey, let me get off the phone and try to record it. And I couldn't get the recording with the windows closed. I tried, and I didn't get anything on my phone. So I tried to roll down my windows, and my car beeps when I open the window, or when I turn on the ignition. And it stopped making the sound. So I was unable to get the recording of that. How long would you guess that sound was going on? Uh, it, it did it a good 10, 15 times. Because I, what I thought I had recorded the first time with the windows closed, um, I thought I had got a good five, six of them. And that was after already hearing it and getting off the phone with my friend and everything. So, so there might still be something on that phone, slightly? Possibly. Yeah, I mean, we might be able to amplify I, it. I, it's possible if it's still on the microchip. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, that, that's something we can talk about later. Yeah. yeah. So, 10 or 15 times, so the way you said it, maybe that's a minute it was doing it? Maybe no. less? No, because it would, it, would, it would growl and it would scream like that. Uh-huh. And then it would sit there for like 30 seconds, and then all of a sudden it would go again. And then sometimes maybe... A little longer in between, like 45 seconds a minute. It just depended. And it was the same direction? From the same direction you, you figure every time? Yeah. It was, it, was like, it was like no more than 20, 15, 15, 20 feet from my car. Huh. And then that just spooked me because I just had this feeling that there was something there again, huge, watching me. And I could not pinpoint what it was, and it was next to me and I couldn't see anything anywhere so I went taking off uh, tearing down the really? I got a cut got it. so I took off tearing down the road um, it was a dirt trail and a dirt trail or a dirt road well a dirt a, du a, a dirt, dirt road, road. Yeah. okay yeah um, in your car yeah in my car and something was throwing like there was a bunch of um, small pebbles on the road something was throwing these rocks like handfuls of rocks at my back window at my back window and I thought that it could possibly be that I was kicking it up because I was driving so fast but being in a Honda Civic that's not likely that it would kick all the way up to the back window Huh. And that happened right when you took off? Uh, no, it was... I took off, and then... It was, uh... Probably a good... I'll say a quarter mile down the... Uh-huh. Down the trail. Or down the road. 
huh. that it started happening. And then it stopped uh, about a quarter mile before I got out to the main road. Wow, the whole time. Yeah. So you you're driving. How fast do you you expect you were driving or think you were driving? With these tires, uh, probably I was probably doing like 55 or 60 through there. Because if not, I was slipping. I would have been slipping. 55 or 60 on a dirt road. That's pretty fast. Yeah. And, and I was the, sliding. I was like, I was, I was freaking out. I was terrified. And it wasn't like when you were taking the corners, things were hitting your window. It was a, a consistent, or no, there was there was hardly any corners on it. Yeah. It was a, uh, it was a pretty straight. It was you know a little bit of hills, little uh -huh. tiny corners, nothing major. But. Huh. How many times do you think something hit hit your back window? Uh. Four to six times, I think. Huh. So, you get to the bottom of the hill? Yeah, so I get to the bottom of the hill, and I go down to a store that's right across the way, so I could still see the trail, make sure nobody goes up there uh, for the things that I was watching up there. And there was a bus stop between the store and the trail, and I was in the parking lot, and I'm just, I'm staring, like just staring at the trail. And all of a sudden, right in front of the bus stop, it just comes right out in front of the bus stop. When I went back by the bus stop, the bus stop was about eight, nine feet tall. And this was standing about six inches to a foot over the bus, the top of the bus stop. And what, what was, what, describe it. It, uh, it was probably nine to ten feet tall. It had like dark brown hair all over it. It was, it took a few steps, you know, just right in front of the bus stop. It was kind of hunched over, long arms. It was, it was a Bigfoot. What, uh, what distance were you from visually seeing it and how much light was on it? About... 100, 150 feet, and there was a lot of light on it because there was there was street lights out at that point. And it just stepped right out in front of there, and I knew I knew this thing was so smart that that I only saw it because it wanted me to. And, and no other reason. What what happened after that? So then, just as quick as it stepped right around the corner of the bus stop and and took the couple of steps right in front of the bus stop, it went back. It went back around the bus stop and ran up I saw it running up the trail and I let off the most god awful scream that you couldn't nobody could replicate that you couldn't even see something like that in a movie and I it had to have carried for like at least five miles it had to have woken people up at that time of night and again what time of night is this? that was about 3am at that point this is 3 a.m. of the second night of something happening at this particular location. Right. Uh, second incident that night. Right. Well, that would be... That night. Yeah. Third incident. Third, oh, there God. was the howling. Yeah. And then, and then the was, rock throwing. Well, there was the howling out in the distance. Yeah. Right when I had first oh, got gotcha. there. Oh, gotcha. Uh-huh. Then there was the growling and the weird uh -huh. screech or scream. Then there was the rocks. Now... It almost sounds like it was chasing you down the road. If it it showed up at the bottom of the trail. And that's that's what I felt like like it was chasing me down the road and then it was almost it, I felt it when I was up there. Uh-huh. that it didn't want me there and that's why it was trying to scare me. And when I went down there and I left when it the way it screamed it, it was like it was mad that I had left. It was weird huh huh well so it sounds like a great great um, encounter to me uh, not right at the moment it wasn't <laughs> but it, it did scare yeah. you and, and are you planning on going back to the site you know what? I I am planning on going back I have finally got up the nerve but not by myself I'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> well you know from our point of view uh, 
Please say your name again and Shannon Blake. and your basic uh, occupation and security. some history on yourself. Yeah, security. Um, been doing security for many years, uh, about seven, eight years. And then I was in the military for a couple of years. And, yeah. What I was saying was that uh, I had never s researched at all as far as as far as I knew about Bigfoot was Harry and the Hendersons when I was a kid. Never thought about it again, you know, whatever. Uh, I thought it was fairy tale, basically. And what I saw that night, the way that its knees were bent when it was walking, the, the way it was hunched over, uh, the way it was, like, swinging its arms when it was walking, and um, what I saw, and then I went ahead and started Googling about it, and, I, and that's when I had first seen the Patterson film. And that's exactly what I saw. Is what I saw uh, out there in Santa Clarita is what I saw on the Patterson film. Now, the Patterson film, I don't know if you know this, that's a female. That's a female? Yeah, she has breasts and on the, on the close-ups. But w So what you're saying is that was, that was the same... If you could say that was a, a, the same type of being. It, it was the same type of being, yes. I didn't see breast on the one that I saw. Uh-huh. But, yeah, it was definitely the same. The way its back hunches over, just like right here, everything. The way that it was walking. Yeah. Awesome.